Welcome to this session on creating a new pattern. In this session, we'll see how to create a custom pattern from scratch, and we'll walk through building an example following the suggested steps. Then we'll discuss some common pitfalls that we should avoid during this process, and we'll finish by reviewing the guidelines to building good patterns. So let's go ahead and get started. Here are the set of steps we should consider when creating a custom pattern from scratch. The first step is to create the custom patterns block and add the required structure and CSS classes. Then we could add placeholders to define common areas that can hold content if necessary. There may be occasions in which we don't need placeholders because we just have images or CSS within the block. Once this step is complete, then we can use the PH class to hide placeholders at runtime if needed. Next, we should add the phone and tablet classes to specify the styles for the devices that the pattern may be used on. We should also add descriptions and comments to help make the pattern easier to use and understand. We can also visually help developers as they work inside of Service Studio by providing visual cues and special styling to provide a better user experience. And for the last step, we need to make the pattern public so it can be referenced and used inside of other modules. Let's walk through each of these steps as we build an example pattern. In this example, we'll be building a card pattern, and we'll start the same way we would start any new pattern, which is by creating a new block. Then we can add the required structure and CSS classes. So first, we'll add a wrapper container, which we'll name card. We should also add an associated CSS class for this container. Then we can add three containers inside the wrapper container to create areas for the card's header, body, and footer. And we would also add the corresponding classes to the CSS. Once the structure for the new card is complete, we should add placeholders which highlight common areas to place content. Placeholders make it easier for other developers to adopt and use new patterns. In this example, we added placeholders inside of each of the three inner containers. The placeholders don't affect the existing CSS, but we can optionally add the PH class to any element that we don't want displayed if it doesn't include any content. So for example, if the developer chooses not to include anything in the footer, we can save some screen real estate and only show the header and the body. This class would set the display property to none. For the next step, we can optionally add classes for phone and tablet, as well as for portrait and landscape modes. This will help us fine tune our CSS for multiple devices and orientations. If our card has a width of 600 pixels by default, we could use the classes to set it to 200 pixels on a tablet and 100 pixels on a phone. Remember to document everything in your patterns. Add descriptions to placeholders, input parameters, and blocks. And in any action, add comment nodes to help document your logic. It is also important to visually help developers use the pattern in Service Studio. We can accomplish this by ensuring they can properly preview it in the editor canvas. If a pattern does not have a UI, you can add an icon or visual cue that will be visible in the canvas. This should be placed in the true branch of an if widget whose condition has been set to false. In this example, the pressing finger shows the inclusion of touch events, but since the if is always false, it will never appear at runtime. If the pattern does have a UI, but you'd like to have different styling in the Service Studio canvas, use the prefix Service Studio for those CSS properties. And finally, we should make sure that this block is public so it can be referenced and used in other applications modules. Now, let's take a look at a few of the common pitfalls to keep in mind when we're creating new patterns. At the top of the list, 
is using CSS inside of blocks, screens, and generally outside of the theme. The result of this practice is an application that is difficult to maintain as well as difficult to scale. Another critical pitfall to keep in mind is using inline CSS and recreating the same pattern in multiple screens of an application. The result of this practice is a lot of wasted development time when we could have leveraged the power of a reusable block. This practice can also create an application that is difficult to scale and hard to maintain. Also keep in mind that we want to avoid recreating patterns that already exist in out systems or on the forge. The result of this would also be wasted development time and once again it's more difficult to maintain. So it's helpful to become familiar with the patterns that are available so we don't waste time building something that already exists. And finally, here are some guidelines that can help us build good patterns. A good pattern should be able to be used anywhere. So be sure to build a structure without a theme. We just want the basic skeleton. Do not include any business logic, just the functional logic. Give preference to CSS animations instead of JavaScript, so patterns can be easily maintained and updated. Prefer CSS classes to inline styles, as this is also easier to maintain. Try to use semantic class names that are easy to understand instead of style-based names. And use CSS pseudo elements whenever possible to allow the pattern to be adaptable and reduce the number of needed block elements. So that's it for creating a new pattern. Thank you and have a good day.